So what is the best, most effective workout plan? The thing is, I get this question a lot and I can't give a general recommendation because it varies based on the individual. The individual recovery ability, uh, tolerance for volume, motor control, a lot of things go into designing a proper, correct workout plan for the purpose of stimulating improvements in muscular strength and size. Now today, I'm gonna teach you how to do it based on your individual ability to adapt and recover and the equipment you have available. What's up guys, Jay Vincent here. In today's video, we're gonna go over how to build and construct a proper workout plan for the sake of stimulating improvements in muscular strength, muscular size, and all the five general and trainable factors of functional ability. So basically, when we're designing a workout plan, we need to address every major muscle group in the body. I prefer and recommend people do this with a full body workout because the research shows that there's absolutely no difference between full body workouts and split routines. If you prefer to do a split routine for the sake of going to the gym more frequently, that's fine. But most people are kind of on a tight schedule and I don't want you to be under the erroneous assumption that somehow split routines are more effective because they're not. We need a full body routine that addresses all the major muscle groups. So we wanna start with multi-joint movements and work the muscles biggest to smallest. So obviously the largest muscle group in your body is the hip and thigh muscles. So we're gonna be starting with some sort of hip extension movement to work the glutes, quads, the hamstrings, and everything in the hips and thighs. Basic squat or a leg press is just fine. It's pretty much preference. I prefer that if you don't have the best motor control and you're a beginner, you're probably going to want to stick to a leg press. Any kind of leg press besides that horrible 45 degree slanted leg press is just fine. If you have more skill and more motor control and you prefer a squat, that's great too. Honestly, I prefer to do a squat. The truth is the exercise is not going to determine how good your results are. They are all equally effective. It's how you do the exercise. If you're doing the exercise with a high intensity of effort, you're going to be recruiting and stimulating the most amount of motor units and stimulate the best adaptive response. Which exercise you choose to do this doesn't really make a difference. So we're starting with our lower body. We need a hip extension movement, squat or leg press, any kind besides the 45 degree leg press is pretty much fine. Now let's move on to the upper body. We need something for the anterior pushing muscles in the horizontal plane. Pecs, the front delts, triceps, all that stuff. So any sort of chest press movement is just fine. Whether you do a converging chest press, hammer strength chest press, bench press, cable press, doesn't really matter. But if you have the option it's probably going to be your best bet to choose a converging chest press because this machine accommodates the true function of the chest, which is humeral adduction. Something a push up and something a bench press does not accommodate. So, any sort of converging chest pressing movement is ideal, but in reality, any sort of chest pressing movement in the horizontal plane is just fine. Now we need a movement that addresses the horizontal pulling muscles, the posterior muscles. Any kind of row is just fine. I prefer a hammer strength row or a nautilus compound row, but even if you're using cables, barbells, dumbbells, all doesn't really matter. You just want to choose a nice smooth rowing movement, preferably without friction and sticking points that you might find in some older cable machines that have a lot of gunk on the guide rods. Probably is not going to be that great. You're likely going to want to choose a hammer strength type machine Avoid things like Matrix and Life Fitness because they are notorious for having tons of friction and tons of sticking points. If you don't have any hammer strength equipment for your rowing movements, you're probably going to just want to use barbells or a cable considering that it's smooth. Now we need to address the vertical pushing muscles, the deltoids, the clavicular head of the chest, a simple overhead pressing movement 
is just fine. And you can even substitute this with a lateral dumbbell raise or a lateral raise machine. I prefer to use an overhead press machine, a selectorized machine, simply because it allows you to stabilize your body and focus on the target muscle area, which is gonna be your deltoids. If you're doing something like a standing overhead press and you add a balance challenge to this exercise, you're going to reduce the effectiveness of the exercise, which the purpose of this exercise is to deeply inroad and fatigue the target muscle area. So if you're standing there trying to balance the weight, you're gonna take away from that. So ideally, you want to do your overhead pressing movements seated. Smith machine is fine, even a barbell is fine, but you're gonna to wanna to choose the machine that is the smoothest and the most stable. And again, you can substitute an overhead pressing movement with a lateral raise machine or a simple lateral dumbbell raise, it's gonna hit the muscles all the same. So now we need the posterior muscles in the vertical plane, okay? The posterior pulling muscles in the vertical plane. A pull down, a pull over, a chin up, a pull up, they're all pretty much gonna be equally effective. Again, I prefer that you use something like a hammer strength, something that's very smooth, or a cable machine that doesn't have a ton amount of friction in it, it's gonna be extremely effective. But if you have the strength to do a chin up, Great, chin-ups are also very, very good at stimulating the muscles in the back. Exercises you want to avoid are something like kipping pull-ups or muscle-ups or anything that uses momentum. Because while they might look impressive to some people, the momentum is just carrying your body through space. You're not really challenging the muscles. Ideally, again, you'd want to do a pulling movement seated so you can counteract reactionary forces. So when you're doing a pulling movement, make sure the pad is really tight on your legs so you can counteract the reactionary force associated with pulling the weight down. Most of you probably aren't gonna be strong enough to do a chin up, so a basic cable pull down, preferably a hammer strength machine due to the low friction is ideal. Now, one thing I need to mention, just because a lot of these machines, especially hammer strength machines, have independent movement arms, does not mean you want to do a unilateral exercise. For instance, I see tons of people on the hammer strength pull down machine doing a one arm pull down. This is absolutely insane and stupid. You're basically just making the exercise less efficient, time efficient, with no additional benefit in working the muscles. So although a lot of these machines have independent movement arms, you want to do bilateral exercises. You want to work both limbs at the same time always. There is no benefit at all, unless you're missing an arm or you have an injured limb to do a unilateral movement. So always do them bilaterally. Okay, so now we've got five exercises. We've addressed all the major muscle groups of the upper body. That's gonna be your foundation. Now you can add in some single joint movements or simple movements on top of those to work other muscle groups harder. We're not adding additional movements for an increase in volume. The volume of those five exercises is going to be adequate. Consider you did it very hard, preferably to momentary muscle failure, and recruited a high number of motor units. The simple movements, the purpose of these movements is to remove relative involvement of other muscle groups that may be helping so you can work that muscle group harder. Something like an elbow flexion exercise, a biceps curl, in order to work the biceps a little harder, you might want to add that into your workout. A triceps extension, an elbow extension exercise to work your triceps harder by removing relative involvement of other muscle groups may help your triceps grow as well. You're also going to want to do a movement for your abdominals, a simple torso trunk flexion exercise like a clamshell ab machine or a basic crunch is going to be perfect. Now you also want to include exercise for your calves. Although the calves are involved in the leg pressing movement, they are not directly or effectively worked. So any kind of heel raise for the calves, you're going to want to put that in too. Now, if your legs are not completely and utterly destroyed after your leg press or your squat, which many of the times they are if you do it properly, an additional leg extension and a leg curl, you might want to put those in too. Or maybe do an A, B workout. One workout, do your hip extension movement, which works the quad and the hamstrings extremely effectively. And then your next workout a few days later, instead of doing the hip extension movement, do a knee flexion and a knee extension exercise, like a leg curl or a leg extension in place of that squat. Most people are not going to be able to tolerate hip extension, knee extension, and knee flexion all in one workout. Based on my experience in supervising over 20,000 workouts, most of the time, once you become advanced, you're gonna have to start reducing the volume in the legs because there's just so much stress and fatigue generated in that hip 
extension movement. Now, one last exercise you're definitely gonna wanna throw in is something for the forearms, the wrist extensors and the wrist flexors. An Ivanko gripper tool is an extremely good way to work your forearms. You can grab one of these for 40 bucks on Amazon and you'll have it for the rest of your life. But if you don't have one of these, dumbbell or barbell wrist flexion, dumbbell or barbell wrist extension are two movements you're also going to want to throw into your workout. Now we have a whole mess of exercises that are going to effectively work every single muscle group in your body. Now, if you can tolerate a full body routine, you should be doing a full body routine. The only time you wanna implement a split body routine is when you cannot tolerate the volume of a full body routine. I've gotten to this point to where I cannot include a hip extension like a squat or a leg press with pretty much any other movement. I have a lot of fast twitch fiber, I was a very fast runner, tons of fast twitch motor units in my hips and thighs. When I do a set of squats to failure, I'm done for the rest of the day. If you're experiencing this too, if you're finding it difficult to make it through your workout, then you need to cut back the volume and potentially do a split routine. You're not doing a split routine for the sake of more frequency, but to accommodate your volume tolerance. So for instance, maybe one workout, you're gonna do one pulling exercise, one pushing exercise, hip extension, biceps, triceps, etc. The next workout, you're going to do the other pulling, the other pushing exercise, maybe with knee extension, leg curl, abdominals, etc. You want to reduce your volume in order to accommodate the intensity of effort. You never want to pull back on the intensity of effort to accommodate the volume. This is what the vast majority of the fitness industry does, and it's wrong. Keep in mind, intensity of effort is the number one driving force of stimulating the growth mechanism and improvements in muscular strength and size. So that is why you always want to do everything you can to work a muscle harder, but never to work it more. So that's it guys, that's a good foundation, a good starting point for effectively training every muscle group in your body. Again, you can substitute other exercises in or out. You can do split routines if you prefer, but if you're short on time and you want to really optimize a growth stimulus, and just optimize improvement in overall physical capacity, that's where you wanna start. Now, if you guys want a program that shows you exactly how to do this, and demonstrates all of these exercises, many different varieties of exercises for all these muscle groups, go to goldenerasystem.com and purchase my Golden Era Physique System. I will walk you through exactly how to do this and demonstrate in full detail how to do all these exercises. Everything from free weights, barbells, machines, cables, body weight, you name it, it's all included. It'll help you get on the right track and build an extremely effective workout. Now, if you want personal one-on-one -on -one coaching from me to guide you through all this, just dial in everything and make it perfect so you see the absolute best results possible, working directly with me is going to be an excellent way to make sure you nail it and get a perfect workout. Click the link in the description, book a free call with me, and I'll show you all about my 12-week unlimited coaching program where I will teach you everything about proper exercise science, physiology, diet, and help you get the best physique of your life. And guys, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the bell notification icon for when I drop more science-based approaches to exercise and nutrition.